how to create and edit tables in Canva. Hi, Kerry here from Dream Creator Beat and welcome to my channel where I show you how to make money online with low content products like KDP low content books, printables and digital planners. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So today I'm going to show you how to actually go about creating tables with the new feature that has appeared in Canva. It's also in the free account and not just the pro account. And this is something that has definitely been needed for a long time. In all the other programs where you create planners and logbooks and things, you use tables. So we've really needed that. So let's dig in and start designing. So I'm going to go to create a design you can automatically set select some of these defaults like us letter document is eight and a half by 11 or a4 or you can choose your own custom size and you must make sure if you are choosing your own custom size to make sure that you select in for inches now i've already got this so i'm going to use this size i'm not using bleed so i've not got to add any extra um inches like 0.125 to the top, 0.125 to the bottom and 0.125 to a side. So I don't need to do that. But what I do need to have is some guides. So I know that I am not going over my uh, KDP margin. So I've got to keep everything inside the guides. Now, how I do that is I use this ruler and to get to the ruler is you go to file and show ruler and guides. I don't do their margins because their margins is a lot bigger than what I want to set my margins to. So I'm going to take that off. And how I set them is I press R on my keyboard. It gives me a rectangle and then I start resizing it. So if you can see those, that black box there, it's actually giving me my size. Now I can get away with 0.4, um, both width and height because the minimum requirement for a KDP margin in a margin is 0.375. So on the outside margin, it's 0.25, but 0.375 is the minimum. So I could go to 0.4, but if you want a bit bigger to give you a bit more wiggle room, 0.5 for both height and width. Hang on, I've got the width, so I need to come down a bit. There we go. So I've got 0.5 going each way. So I've now got a square. All I need to do is put that in the corner, duplicate it. So I command D or control D on your keyboard, drag it out. And as you can see, it snaps anyway. And again, duplicate, drag out and snap. So that's the first part. Now I'm going to actually grab my guides and to get your guides, you go into the corner here and you can see that the mouse has changed to like two little arrows. I'm going to just drag it out and it's now giving me my guides. Now you could do it by eye and actually see the guides there from the ruler, but I often think it's easier to have the shapes there. So you know that when you're putting them together, that everything is the right size. So that's it. So everything is set. And even if I create a new page, now my margins are there. They're for me to see. They're there for me to work with or actually the guides, but I can actually now work and see everything. So I'm going to delete these gray boxes off. And I'm actually going to start creating table. Now to get to your tables, all you need to do is go to elements in the search, type the word table or tables and you'll actually see different ones come up. Of, of course, they've got other images as well, but these are the elements that you can use and you can use all these different styles, but you can actually take a blank one and change it to any of these styles and create your own styles. So if I click on here, it's brought me out a blank table that I can now go and change everything to it. Now it's actually transparent. So if I click on just any image here, if I send this image to the back by clicking on position and backward, you can actually see that image through there. But if I click on the table and I select the whole table and go up here and change this to say a color, it is no longer transparent. I can also change the borders. So the, all the borders are selected. I can actually change the color of the border. I can also change the thickness of the border by clicking there 
and I can also change the spacing of the border so it starts going out. I can actually change my different rows and different columns and cells. So say I click on this individual cell, I'm actually going to get rid of this image in the background. So you can actually see what I'm doing. And if I make this a bit bigger as well. So if I click, say, on any cell here, I can go in and change that cell so it is a complete different color to all the others. Um, so that's another great thing that you can do. Or you can select, say, a row. So if I click in the top corner there and then just take my mouse over to the end of this one, hold the shift button down, it selected all that row. And again, I can come in and change those colors yet again so that they are all completely different. And again, you could also do that with columns. So select that top one and then hold the shift button down. Again, I can go through and just change all the colors. So that is the first thing. Also, what you can do is you can actually resize individual columns like that by just dragging in. And you can also resize rows by doing the same sort of thing. So you can make it bigger, smaller. And then you can also make the whole table bigger by just dragging out in one of the corners. And if you use these ones here, it only takes that column on that end. And this one will take this column on this end here. And this one here will take the top row. And this one down here will take this bottom row. But again, if you go in, you can resize individual ones like that. So that's how that works. Now, how do you actually add an extra row or a column? If you click here, it gives you the option to add the columns before, add the columns after, move the columns to the right, so say you wanted to add another column, you just click on there and that's added a, another column. Okay, so now let's actually use the tables for a purpose. So let's create, say, a calendar. And if you're doing printables or anything like that, you may sell individual sheets. So this might be, or a digital planner where you sell individual sheets. So we might do a calendar for May, which will be coming up shortly. So what we need is seven columns across so for the seven days of the week and we need six rows going down. So what we can do is if we click on any of these, click here on these three buttons, add a column after. Again, just going back here, adding another column after, adding another column and we've got six. I need one more. So that's the days of the week. And then here I'm going to add so the problem here, it's not giving me the option to add rows and purely because I'm not selected a individual cell. So if that happens to you, you need to make sure you've selected an individual cell, then click on the little three dots and then you can add your rows. So there we go. And then I can resize the whole thing. So it's sort of going to fit into my margins there. And then again, what I can do is I just click on in the cell and then type out what I want, press the tab key, and that takes me to the next cell. Oops, this Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we're going to start with the actual dates for the month of May. So the first is actually on a Sunday. So Gone on Sunday, second, third. So now what I can see is I can either add an extra row or I can actually go up here and fill these in. So it depends how you feel. If you want you for, you want it to be uniform throughout your whole planner or diary, then you might want to have just the five spaces and then go up here for the extra days. So 
So that's normally what I do. But if you don't like that sort of thing, then you could have gone down here and added an, an extra row. So what we can also do is we can actually change the fonts as well. So we can click in the top right hand, top left hand corner, go to the top right hand corner by holding the shift key down. We can change our fonts so it's something different. We can also make our fonts a little bit bigger. And we can also change the color of our box. Right, I should choose something a little bit different. Go for that teal color. And then we could probably keep our font and everything the same there. Now there's other little things that you can also do. So say you wanted to write all of Tuesday in just this one. I don't know why you would do that, but you might feel like doing it. So what you can do is you can click here on the three little dots and you can say size column to content and that works there to resize it. Now, if you didn't want that anymore and you just wanted everything to be back to Tuesday, what you can now do is select Monday and then hold the shift button down. I've gone to 29 and then go up here and what you can now do is you can size columns equally. Now everything is the same size. Same if you say you've resized this one here. You've made this one a bit bigger. And it's out of sync. So what you can do, same sort of thing, click on there. Click there and you can size rows equally and it brings everything back to the right size. So like we say, this is a bit too big. It's going outside my margins. So I could just resize everything by going into the corner there and then moving that around. So what else we can do is we can also now start creating notes lines and things like that that have a better measurement by using uh, tables instead of using like draw out a line and in my case I use rectangles to get the right size. So what we can do is just again select a table. I'm just going to move that down there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the other two columns. So I just select one of the cells, click on there and I'm going to delete that column, click on that again, click there and delete column. So now I've got my big column there, but obviously I don't want, I want more rows and I actually want this. So I've got a bit more space, make it a bit, I can do that. Well, now sometimes it works out better if you click here in the spacing and go to cell spacing and click there. It sort of brings it in a bit nearer to what you want. And that's given me that. So it's a better size. So now what I can do is I can click there and add as many rows as I want there, okay. Put it there and then what I can do say I don't want that outline there what I can do is select there and if I go on here and I choose that line there go to the border weight and bring that down to zero and just click off it you can see that line's gone and the same if I do it at the other side click here, click on that side, click on the border weight, drag it down to zero and that is there. And then if I wanted those lines to be slightly thinner, again, I could go there and hang on, I've got nothing selected. There, border weight and then just bring that probably down to one. And I could also change the color to something a bit of a lighter color gray. In fact, it's brought those two back, which I didn't want. So let's get it to the right color first and then do that where you take the border off. 
they both should be gone. So that's where you put your notes. And then you could just use an ordinary text. And use this one here. I'm going to put notes here. And what I could do is I could also use this effect here and use background. I could check the roundness off. I could bring the spread in a little bit. And I could also make that that color there. That I could actually match it to that color there. Even match the font I used, which was Alice. Alice. A19, 19, and drag that up there. And then again, I haven't put a date on here, so use that. May 2022. There. That can move everything slightly up put that there so that is our calendar nicely done and again you could do different effects as well so you could have a lift for that one so that is how to create and edit tables in Canva if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button and if you haven't already don't forget to hit the little subscribe button or be above my head and if you want to don't forget to check out my Canva playlist